Welcome one and all to a brand new series in the channel. This is going to be um, a very basic space program. So we're going to actually talk through the space program. It's going to be in realism overhaul. It's going to be an RP1 series. It's in uh, KSP 1.10. Um, it's got all the new sort of, you know, residuals and pressure and requirements of RP1 and RO and all this sort of stuff. But uh, unlike some of my other series, um, it's actually going to be me talking to you as I go through the process of building and flying these craft and a much more basic thing, you know, making my decisions, why I'm doing what I'm doing and how to do it. So if that interests you, please join me. So before we actually get to building a rocket, we have to start a new game. So we're going to call this basic. This is my very basic space program, little flag there we've put together. You can figure out why it is what it is in the future, I'm sure. Um, what I will say is while we're going through this, I'd love some of your comments down below. Um, just telling me what you think, what you'd like me to do, what route you want to take. Um, I'm going to go through some of the setup right now. I'm not going to go too much into detail with it, but any of your feedback, always welcome. So. Difficulty, we're going to go into moderate um, and this looks as though it's going to be okay. I'm going to allow quick saves um, primarily because I'm recording and it could go horribly wrong. And I'm going to allow reverting flights just because of the Kraken and so forth. So um, I'm going to keep all of this stuff on, I think, just as defaulting. Um, let's have a look. Button manager, you don't need to worry about that. Click through contract configurator, just the RP0 or RP1 contracts. Graphics, we're going to keep all this stuff as it is. Hangers are fine. Kerbal renamer. Um, we'll preserve original traits. No, we don't want that. We're going to have 50% female. Uh, badass is going okay. Kerbalism. Lifetime radiation. Ooh, that looks interesting. Should we have that? Yeah, we're going to have that. Um, we're going to have Kerbalism. All this stuff's just going to say as it is. Uh, KSP wheels. We've got patch manager. Fairings. Going to keep them as they are. Real antennas. We'll keep that normal. RO mods. Persistent recoloring. Flag decal. Yeah, we're going to allow that. Right. Now here's some of the choices, the changes the RP1, the first one we're going to see, which is X-Plane Contracts. I'm going to enable X-Plane Contracts uh, because we're just going to play with all the parts here. I may do another series where in the future we don't do X-Planes, but I'll explain that when the time comes. Now, uh, crews retire, require proficiency training and mission training. I'm actually going to, um, do I want to leave that on? I would love, can I just... Oh, I can. We can do mission training. So we're going to get rid of proficiency. We're going to keep mission training because um, I quite like to have to plan ahead a little bit. And that'd be quite good. So we'll we'll do that. The proficiency. Well, yeah. Um, crew retirement. OK, I want the crew retirement. Part toolings. Everything else is the same. We've got this enabled. We've got test flight. I'm not going to have pre-launch ignition failures because that just involves me rolling the craft back. Um, and, you know, I it, it, we're just going to leave it as it is. Penalty for high dynamic pressure, we're just going to leave that as default. Uh, da, 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 TU, so that's all done. So let's begin. Let's see what happens. So here we are. We've got our crew that we're probably not going to use. They're going to retire at some point. Um, in, in flights, yeah, 15 years. Very nice. All right. We have our um, point to spend, but we're not going to do that just yet. We've got Gene telling us what to do. Right. First things first, get to the tracking station because we need to just make sure that we're actually going to be at the right place. Because there used to be, and I don't know if there still is, there used to be a little glitch with all of this. Oh, hi again, Gene. Yes, nice to see you. I don't need to see that. Where um, you used to uh, start off and uh, you wouldn't actually be in the correct location or it wouldn't act properly because it thought you were at KSC, but that KSC wasn't really the place that you were. Anyway, I don't know if that still exists. So anyway, off we go out of there. So now we can actually spend our upgrade. We're going to put it on our VAB. We want a bit of pointage for that. That's good. And you can see already we are below the required amount for upgrades because we're on moderate. So let's have a look. Missions. Hello, Gene. Again, you seem to be in absolutely everywhere. So we've got to first launch because if I just go to the archive, we auto-completed this unlock part tech node. If you come into here too quickly, you haven't gone anywhere else first. Sometimes that will not have unlocked. You have to go out and come back in or wait or whatever. So we're going to take first launch. What does it say? We've got to climb greater than 50 meters per second. Okay, Gene. So we've got no science to do anything with. I suppose we should build a craft, shouldn't we? So let's start off with a craft. Now, one of the big changes. One of the big changes, and we'll just get rid of uh, Werner there. One of the big changes that we've got, got is that first of all, the science cores have changed a little bit, depending on which version you've played. 
Um, we're gonna we're gonna start off with a science core, and um, I'm gonna make its diameter because I can. I'm gonna take it down to to 300, um, and we'll play with this later. We'll put it onto start. There we go, and we'll just apply that and close it. So it won't let me do it because my EC amount is too low. So let's just put. I'm gonna start with 100 because I can. Um, and we'll just apply that and that should be okay. Now, having a look through this, we've got all this sort of stuff. What have we got? We've got any experiments or anything on board. I can't see anything. We've got the telemetry. We're gonna put that onto waiting automatically just because it saves us time later. So we're gonna close that, that's done. That's our first task done. We have our avionics unit. Next thing we want is we want a fuel tank. So we're gonna go for a conventional structure. We have residuals in this version, which means that when I actually prepare this, I have to be ready to, to, to expect that our, uh, our tank was gonna have something left in it. So it's a bit of a balancing act, as well as having the chance of our engine sort of blowing up in the mid launch and things. We also have the possibility we're gonna carry extra fuel or fuel's gonna cut off early or anything like that. Um, and the engine will actually tell you, I think, where are we? Uh, predicted residuals almost about 5% of our fuel could be left behind. And it, it will vary, it's random number generation. We'll also see that this is a, a high pressure engine and I need a high pressure tank, so I need to do that straight away. Get that across there onto that. So I've now got a high pressure tank. We're gonna fill it with fuel by clicking on, where's my button? I need to do this first, are we actually working? Oh, I need to decouple that, is it now okay? Ooh. Right, so if you have a little problem with your uh, your Araby or anything like that, it is worth just un unclicking it, taking it off or redoing it um, and trying again. And you should hopefully then see that you've got the ability to fill up the tank as required. And you'll see inside the tank, we now have nitrogen because that is gonna be our pressurant, okay? And so just it's just like an, a third fuel type almost. As our fuel gets used up, the nitrogen will actually fill in the rest of the tank. Otherwise we'd have a basic a vacuum or we're trying to produce a vacuum in there, which is not healthy for our tank. So let's see, we're gonna take this and I'm actually gonna make it three minutes. That means it's gonna have a burn time of 55 seconds. Now, I know that the burn time, if I come down here and click on engine, I know that the burn time for the WAC Corporal is uh, 40, 47. Yeah, that's that's a problem, isn't it? We've got we've got too much fuel in there. Well, I don't mind having too much because uh, this first mission, I don't need to be too accurate with it. And we can also we can always underfuel this just a little bit if I really need to. So, next step, I could launch this. It's got a flat end on it, so I don't really want to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to put another tank on the top, and it's going to be strange. I'm going to put a, a, a procedural service module on. Why a service module? Well. I may want to put some weight in the front here to affect how it's going to fly. If I have problems with this flipping out, I may want to put some 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 lead in there. I might want to put something else in there. I might put some sounding payload in there, or I might want to do anything else. So I'm going to choose to use a service module. If it was a bigger craft, I probably wouldn't do this because they can be a bit more expensive. The, the mass of this is about the same as a, a normal tank, though. So for this size thing, it's not a big problem. So we're going to go for a smooth cone, and we're going to put it on peaked two and the top of it we're gonna make zero, the bottom we are going to make 0.3, uh, sorry, 300, because that's what we've been doing. And I'm actually gonna make it, I'm gonna make it a meter long there, there we go. So now we've got a very silver pointy thing, right. Next problem, um, well, I actually am gonna do something, well, we'll come on to that in a minute. If I was just gonna launch this now, it would tumble, uh, because as the fuel drains, the mass is all back here. If we actually put on this here, we can see our mass is behind our center of lift. That means that the mass is going to swing it round and it's going to basically uh, tumble. Um, we're going to have all sorts of instability. So we need to make sure that our center of lift or center of drag is actually the back here. So we're going to do that by getting ourselves a wing. Here we are. We've got one of those and we're going to put, uh, well, we're going to start with one because it's just easy. Now, if I hit J while I'm hovering over it, this thing comes up and uh, when you do it nowadays you actually get these handles so you can you can move it around with the handles and you can reshape it i i'm i'm, a, I'm, I'm old school so i don't really uh use the handles um i sort of do it old school style so i can guess what i'm gonna go for i'm gonna go for let's see take this down to oh not that far not that far we want to go right 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 mouse button will actually just bring it out by little steps like that so 200 and then this i want to go down to what 350 and then the next one 
would be 350 as well. I wish there was a way of doing that itself. There we go. And then uh, offset it. I want to offset it a little bit. I'll come back to that. Um, this thickness, I want it to be hmm, 50 at the root. So it's going to be reasonably thick at the root. And then at the tip, I want it to be a little bit, a little bit thinner, but not too much thinner because I still want that drag. I want a big drag factor going on. So there we go. We've got one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Now, um, that, however, is not all fin fin um, because we've got all sorts of stuff going on right now we've got this stuff here for example leading edge trailing edge um, I want to keep that rounded but what I actually do and this is something you might want to do is I just always move it around I cycle it a little bit just in case because when you have these default ones loading up uh, sometimes they're not quite what you expect when you actually use them Ferrum used to have a few little glitches with those so I tend to just move them even if I'm going to put them back to what they were so I've got a rounded one on the top and I've got none on the bottom. I don't mind about this being a flat end. In fact, it's it's probably a positive for me being flat. So um, my my width of this, oh, hello, come back. My width of this top section here, you can see currently it's thick air on the outside because the tip is very thick. I want to change that. I want it to be sort of more towards there. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to balance it. Oh, you can go minus. I'm actually going to balance it out a bit and um, we're going to try and go uh, about 200 on each I think so we'll just do that go for that can I just type these in yes I can so we're gonna go for 200 or 0.200 and we're gonna do this one as the same we're gonna do 0.200 for this one as well okay and that means this bottom bit we don't have a trailing edge so it really doesn't matter there's there's no there's no edge on it at all um, so we can actually get rid of that and and there we go there's our our wing it's it's ugly and I'm, I can recolor it you can actually recolor it down here you can you can change these to whatever you want um, you go uniform take this down take that down take that down wonderful and you can do it with all of them as you so see fit take it all down to nothing so at least it's consistent um, the version of RP1 RO that I'm actually playing with um, or more accurately the B9 wings that this is this is from um, does not have the ability to recolor it properly at the moment you can however use the hue saturation and brightness to do it but I'm not going to fiddle around with that just now it's not a big killer for us so there's our thing you will notice it looks like a bit of a sticky out thing now that's very much a British sort of canard from from the 1950s and this is not a British series so we're gonna we're gonna go on and do what everybody else does which is we're gonna look at this offset and I'm gonna offset it Ooh, let's see 0 0.2 0 0.25 there we go that's nice and then I'm gonna want four of them that's right I want four of them and I want to put them at the bottom like that now I could launch this now I could launch this and it would be fine however there's something interesting about uh, doing that if I do that this may not break the uh, the 40 kilometer mark it might it probably will break the 40 kilometer mark but it won't do it for very long I also haven't put any science on it yet um, so I'm not going to get much from that I'll get first launch but one of the things I can do is if I take this off I can put a parachute on and this seems a bit weird you know why would you put parachute on your first craft well this is not going to be our highest launch and we don't have any other missions other than launch it and one of the things we can do is get science from recovering a vessel so we're going to try and recover this vessel because it's going to probably be our lowest altitude launch that we ever do so let's try that unless it's a plane of course so first thing we we go into the uh, action groups menu and uh, number five I go to number five and I go arm shoot straight away but we also have this because I've clicked on the shoot um, and we're gonna knock it down and it should go down to there we go perfect size so it's about 300 uh, 300 centimeters across there um, I don't know what that is in inches because I don't use inches um, we're gonna keep everything the same however what I am gonna do is I'm gonna say um, how many spare shoots do I want? I actually only need one spare shoot, thank you very much. Don't need extra shoots. Um, the required speed and the number of parachutes. We're going to have two parachutes because this comes with a parachute on each side. And I want my required touchdown speed to only be about eight. So that's that. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, we're going to change that one as well to eight and that parachute number to two. We're going to take this to about 3,000 and 1,000, and then we'll do the same for this one. I don't need it opening too early. 
and I think that's us done. So you can see currently the mass of this parachute is supposed to be 0.118 tons. When we apply these settings, it drops significantly. Okay, now that is about ready. Let's have a look at the next step. Right, so I have coloured our craft a little bit, so it's not just silver. We so we've done that, but I, I will show you probably that in the next in the next episode how I did that, just in case you don't know how to do it. Um, there's one thing we need to do before we go to 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 run it. We could simulate it. I'm not going to do that. First of all, we're going to check these things, make sure staging is correct. It is not. So we need our engine to go first. You can have with this engine. I think you can probably nowadays because of the time it takes to spool up. It's not very long. You could actually have it decouple from the uh, the launch stage straight away, but depending upon if you have actually decided to uh, have launch engine failures and things like that, it's probably worth to keeping it as it is, just because if there was a problem, you could actually just roll the craft back in, reset it, and our parachute's going to go at the end there. Um, however, it's going to take a year to build, isn't it? What's going on? Well, we need to actually think about tooling this because we haven't tooled anything at all. What we can do is you can see these are the parts that we've got this bit, this bit, this bit, the three parts that need tooled. 365 days becomes 65 days. So we're going to tool that. Okay, that's going to cost us 5,000 funds, which is a big chunk of our money there gone. It also means we can't get ourselves a token to uh, to in speed this up either. So that this is this is the craft we're going to go with without any speeding up of building. And uh, and then we're going to save it before I do this. We've named it Atlatl 1 or um, the numbers are just for me to remember which one's which. And Atlatl because that's like a throwing spear. So I thought it's a bit like a spear. We'll do that. So to launch it, we're going to click on the launch button. And it will tell us that we haven't got these parts, so I want to buy those seven parts, which is the launch clamp. By the way, I put a launch clamp on the bottom. Uh, procedural bits and bobs, all this stuff. There we go. So we're going to do that. There we go. And it's now on the build queue. So if I look over here, we can see the vessel is on the build queue. So I'm now going to uh, make a copy of that. We'll, I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then we'll spin forward and launch this craft. So back to the main screen. So here we are on the main screen. You can actually see if I um, get rid of this, if you come down the bottom here, there is a, a button that looks like a set of cogs. Um, if you click on it, that is the build list. It's code construction time. Uh, and within that, you can see your, your vessels that you're building, you know, and so see your launch pad and your technologies you're researching. There's our Atlatl 1.0. We're actually going to duplicate it just in case. If there is a problem on launch, it means that we can, we've got another one being built. Now that might seem a bit odd because only one of these is being built at a time, but I will show you why that might help you later. So we're going to warp towards this now. And what you'll see is as we finish, there we go. We now have to roll this out. So I'm going to roll it out to our pad. I've got the correct pad. We've only got one pad, but if there was multiple, we could select them. We're going to roll it out. And while that's actually going to spend uh, three hours rolling out, this next one is actually getting some build work done on it. So if this goes wrong, we're already three hours into or four hours into our, our next build, which is really good. So we'll warp that and there we are. It's gonna be daytime. So let's take this to the pad and uh, and see what happens. All right, so here we are on the launch pad. We're just gonna hit T because I always do, even though we don't have any guidance on this. We're gonna hit Z that puts our engine on full attack and then we're just gonna go. So. Three, two, one, fire the engine, decouple that. There we go. You'll see we have got some science from Flying Low, I believe, uh, because there isn't any science for Flying Low, so you get that coming up anyway. And you can see we're going up at a nice, reasonably straight sort of uh, shot there. That's not bad. Um, we're not veering off to one side. These fins are actually doing well for us, but we do have a problem with the engine. What is the problem? We can come over on the right-hand side here, and there should be... There we go, there's the old test flight. It says we've got a performance loss. Right, that's gonna be problematic for us, but not as bad as it could be because we're not aiming for anything major with this. We're going through the clouds now, that's white on white, it's not brilliant. We're not aiming for anything major with this. We just want to uh, to get up there and, and get some science. It'd be nice if we could get over the 50 kilometer mark or whatever, all right, I think it's 50 kilometers or 40 kilometers for for flying high science, but. We don't have to. This is this craft is not about that. It's about achieving this first contract we had, which we have done, I believe. There we go. Let's have a look what we've got. We've got that's already done. That's the build of that. First launch is complete. So we finished our first launch. We've also got some more contracts coming in now as we go along, which is really good. So basically anything else we get is bonus from right now. Um, 
we can see that yeah this this thing's let's have a look what's its thrust it's yeah it's thrust pretty much half what it should be so we're burning a lot of fuel not really getting anywhere so we're not going to get anywhere really good um interestingly we've not had the engine die on us yet which is nice so there we go um check all of our systems you can see here we've got the fuels are inconsistently coming through so we're going to run out of aniline 22 first it looks like there we go and in fact we've left some of that in the tank a lot of it in the tank we've got a lot of uh, uh, fuming uh, inhibited red fuming nitric acid things or whatever that is i can't remember the actual term I, i'm a biochemist i should really know that we've got nitrogen for days there because obviously the tanks have got some stuff left in them so we're going to make it up to about 35 you can see the engine died early on us so that's why we've not let had everything vanish basically we, what you can do is if this engine had run to full course one of these would have been probably at the bottom it would have been probably zero and the others would have been your excess so we've we've in effect carried that extra bit of fuel up so we probably carried about what seven percent of that six percent of that one percent or two percent of that okay um now we're getting up to our our peak there we can actually hit five which has engaged our parachute there we go and now we're going to come back down now the problem we have coming back down is we've got a nice pointy end and i do not know if this thing is just going to keep accelerating and, and go down hopefully the fins will slow us down or in an ideal world the fins would actually burn off i'd really like it if the fins got burnt off because they're not really designed for these are these are the standard starting fins and so if they get burnt off uh this engine will actually come into play with its mass and hopefully will pull the craft around a little bit which will be quite nice but we will see and what we'll do is we'll actually just speed this up a bit because we're going down through the atmosphere and you can see we're accelerating down to the cape we're, we're at uh, cape canaveral there. there we go um i do not have katniss's cape canaveral installed please do i just um there's just something about it i'm not i don't like when you could land near it because i've had some glitches with it and you end up underneath the surface anyway the, the each to their own on that one it does look stunning though so we've got an awful lot of speed that we're carrying through and my concern is we're going to hit the 3000 mark and have a problem yeah we are oh no our parachutes have gone it's slowing us down slowing us down a little bit and and we got it oh just oh i thought we were going to lose the parachutes there so the parachutes because we were over this bit of water were just late enough to actually trigger and uh, and survive and they're small enough they get ripped off which is wonderful that is actually unbelievable so i i would imagine if you didn't have an engine problem like we had you'd probably be coming from a greater height and what you might get is these fins might come off um some of the original signing rockets actually decoupled their fins to to help that um, but we'll see so there we go splash down and that's the first mission done so until next time where we recover this thing have a great one